Good morning. This is Uncle P with great Presbyterian remunerations. It's a slot that wants to encourage you, to uplift you. Many of us are down and we don't know where to go. But when somebody is with you and feeling with you, we hope that it could get better and better. And we will thank God for everything. I was engulfed in very hard thinking. As I heard some people talk about my country, I was wondering what had become of us as a people. I even thought of myself and wondered who I really am. I was caught in this and it almost choked me. Images of yesteryears floated before me, leaving me with a sensation of hopelessness and nostalgia. The thought of my friends and the good and bad times I had with them flashed through my mind. Some of those old friends have long since quit the sea. They have died. Some who are living have become relatively distant. And some who are thought to be friends have turned out to be a disappointment. The feeling of uncertainty was overwhelming. I thought I would die. A conversation I had held with a friend vividly came back to me. I could hear him reminding me to keep on hoping for all is not lost. One could still find some good in disappointment. For after all, every disappointment is a blessing, so it is said. You too may have had that kind of melancholic or nostalgic feeling. You needed that kind of Something or someone who could give you a tap on the back. It was so close. And yet because of circumstances beyond the person you are, the distance is immeasurable. My friend urged me never to give up hoping. The choking sensation I was experiencing could not go away. Because the urge for something I could not describe kept nudging. I felt like shedding it. But I thought it would look ridiculous, if not ludicrous, for people to see me with a face soaked with tears. The thought of Alan Payton's novel, Cry the Beloved Country, came into my mind. I don't know why. But it helped my thoughts wander away from the disappointment I felt of myself and my society. Alan Payton was no solution to my problem or to the way I felt because what he evoked in his novel was so similar in nature to what I was experiencing in a supposedly free and well-governed democratic country. I was nevertheless bothered by the fact that despite this whitewashing of my society, people still talk to us in very negative terms. They say we are corrupt, we are not conscientious, and uh, we are inconsiderate, tribal, discriminatory, and a host of other uncountable negatives. And I'm betting right my beloved country with similar traits. South Africa before Mandela, a South Africa of apartheid, one of evil, of death. He cried for the tortured people of his country, for those who were treated unjustly. He could not find solace, even in religion, or even the religious were so different from the rest, because they too were apprehensive of color 
and culture. What then was the difference between yesterday's South Africa and the conditions under which we live today, except, of course, that we are ruled by our own brothers and sisters? I don't want to cry for my beloved country. But when I see the state of decadence as many I know have fallen into the general trap of immoral and social compatibility, I feel like crying. Tell me where I can find service. Tell me where I should go to relinquish that nostalgic feeling. The world around me does not seem to provide any means of favor. We hurt ourselves every day, and we joke about it. We take the lives of our people for granted. We exploit them. We damage them. We laugh at our own foolishness. And even now, we laugh at the children who were killed by maniacs. I tried an outlet for my crowded mind, so I put on my television. And what was I confronted with? Images of destitution, hunger-stricken faces, the victims of war and torture, parading the screen. I did it. In disgust, I slipped into a deep slumber. In my subconscious mind, the question kept reverberating. Why? Why is life like this? Why can't things be any better? Why are human beings so Machiavellic, so unreliable, so degenerate? I cried for my country, even in my sleep. It's no joking matter. Just step into my shoes and see if the reaction will not be the same, particularly as we celebrate every day. This is Uncle P with Great Presbyterian Remuneration.